The writers and actors strike has basically frozen all TV and movie production. There have been some talks uh, between the uh, produ production companies and the two unions. As of now, there still appears to be no end in sight. And it's not just the entertainment industry. Auto workers, flight attendants, New Jersey transit engineers all have voted to authorize their unions to strike. Now, part of the reason we're seeing this huge uptake in labor militancy and strikes right now is that the economy is booming. Labor market is. Today, we got the latest example of that. We got the August jobs report. The U.S. added 187,000 new jobs, exceeding expectations once again, bringing the labor participation rate up to its highest level since February 2020. And joining me now is Acting Labor Secretary Julie Su. Um, Secretary, the jobs number today came in above expectations, though, does show deceleration in, in, the, in the job growth over trend. Do you, are you concerned about that, or do you think this is coming in for the kind of much vaunted soft landing people are really, really hoping for? Exactly, Chris. This is what you'd want to see if you want to see a soft landing. This is what is, we, you know, what we know is strong and steady growth after the very uh, hot and rapid recovery under President Biden. 13.5 million jobs created, record low levels of unemployment. This is the transition to the kind of strong, stable economy that we want. So there's a lot of labor activity and labor militancy going on this summer. Of course, uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, you've got the writers and the actors on strike. You've got the strike authorization uh, vote for the, uh, the auto workers. I think that deadline's in two weeks. Do you see a role for the Department of Labor, the White House, the president in those negotiations? Well, the president has said that he is the most pro-union, pro-labor president that we've had. And part of that is economic policies that have created a tight labor market, which give workers more power. Part of that is our recognition of the collective bargaining process, why it's important, how it works, and respecting the parties. So we get involved if we think we can be helpful, but we also respect the parties and their uh, need and willingness to grapple through some hard issues and find win-win solutions themselves. Well, I want to come back to a, 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 one of the more high-profile labor battles that's happened under the Biden administration, uh, for which the president took some, some criticism, and that was uh, the, the railroad unions uh, and the railroad companies, or a number of unions, um, because of the way that railroad labor disputes are sort of statutorily governed, um, it's possible to basically unilaterally uh, 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 sort of foist an agreement on the parties. Um, in order to avoid a railroad strike, that was done. And at the end of that process, the big ask from the railroad labor unions was for sick paid sick days, which they didn't have. My understanding is that subsequent to that, there actually have been additional um, rounds of bargaining that have led to a number of those companies and unions actually securing paid sick days now. Is that right? That's exactly right. So uh, th that demonstrates, too, that the collective bargaining process sort of, you know, it's not it's not like a one and done situation. And that's exactly what happened is uh, workers wanted paid sick days. And one thing that we saw certainly through the pandemic is just how um, untenable it is to have a you know, workers not having any kind of paid days where they can just take off when they need to because they're sick, because a family member is sick. And so uh, the rail workers have gotten that. And that's just one example of many in which uh, unions and employers have come together to the bargaining table and reached really historic wins. We see that in the West Coast ports, right? 29 ports, ILWU made historic demands, and uh, they just ratified that contract. Obviously, the Teamsters and UPS, same thing. Yep. Yeah, and that was another one that looked like it. Like, I think there was also a strike authorization uh, a vote, vote there. Uh, they did not have to go to a strike. They, they, they came to a deal. You, you've been around labor your whole life and career. Um, you, you, you worked representing uh, folks that were uh, workers, government workers. Um, you're now, you, you've been a policy person. You're now the acting secretary of labor. What, do you, what is your belief about why we are seeing the level of labor activism, militancy, organizing, uh, that we're seeing this year in the last two years? I think it's a few things. One is that we are coming off a global pandemic and the pandemic-induced economic catastrophe. That has 
given a lot of people some room to take stock. And workers hmm. are realizing that for a long time, um, workers have not gotten their fair share, that there has been growing inequality, that there's been declining unionization for the last about four decades, um, stagnant wages, and workers are realizing that um, in this moment, uh, they want better and they deserve better. Another part of it is that, you know, a strong labor movement and a worker-centered economy is very much part of Bidenomics. It's the president's entire vision for how we build uh, a strong workforce, uh, you know, profitable employers, and a strong nation. Final question for you is about a regulation the Department of Labor just promulgated, if I'm not mistaken, on overtime pay. This is one of those things where, um, again, these things can happen sort of deep in the administrative state. They sort of wind through, they get announced, um, but they have incredibly important tangible consequences for people. Explain to me the new rule, which m my understanding would make several million more workers eligible for overtime pay. That's right. So. All of our rulemaking is extremely transparent, Chris. You know, it, it goes through a process. It was publicly announced, yes. and now uh, there's a comment period before it gets finalized. But the overtime rule is really about that American promise that if you put in a fair days, a hard day's work, you should get a just day's pay, right? A fair day's pay for a hard day's work. And um, it will, uh, it, when finalized, if at this standard, it would get about 3.6 million um, workers who are currently not eligible for overtime, overtime. And that's just to protect people. If you work over 40 hours in a week, you should be paid for it. Acting Secretary of Labor, Julie Su, on this Labor Day weekend. Thank you so much for making some time for us. Thank you so much, Chris. Happy Labor Day to you.